Welcome to another episode of Two Old Guys Talking About Vintage Films. Uh, today, I've got a treat for us. I picked an old Tim McCoy film that Gracie has put up on the Vintage Film Channel. Mm. And I just, I can remember being a kid in front of the television set Saturday mornings, watching all these great old movies. I didn't know how old they were. All I know is Tim McCoy was a really cool guy. Uh, late, years later, by the way, I found out on um, This Is Your Life, if you remember that show, mm -hmm. that Tim McCoy was a real colonel in the cavalry. Uh, so he was, he in this movie, he's 1936, he looks pretty darn good. But of course, I didn't see him, this movie, or any of his other stuff until the 50s on television. Um, so I loved it. This this guy's a hero. You know, that's a cowboy show. They're all the same, you know, right? There's the bad guys, there's the good guys, there's a pretty girl. Um, but it's just the action and the, the the fact that every Saturday morning, it was either cartoons or cowboy shows, cowboy movies. I thought it was great. It was fun to see this again. And and Tim McCoy being a, a legitimate uh, Western hero, if you will. Yeah, well, actually, or, so... So before we get into um, why this is so B movie uh, and all the other things that uh, we'll get into, um, I actually enjoyed it as well for the fo for the following reasons. Like you said, when we grew up as kids, this was sort of like the filler stuff that was in there on Saturday mornings, right? And we didn't have much sophistication as a background as an adult to pan how ridiculous uh, most of the action was. But then again, when these movies were made in the in the 20s and 30s, uh, and he was, like you say, he, he appeared in over 100 movies. It, it, I have to interrupt but just for a second. Is it just me or does Tim McCoy right here on the right have the largest hat in the in the movie? It, it, the hat has the height, yes. <laughs> <laughs> It, and it's white. It's a white hat. So this yeah. was in the oh, days of white, hat, white, hat. white hats, good guys, black hats, bad guys. Uh, yeah. And here's here's where he's uh, breaking a uh, unbreakable horse uh, that they uh, uh, captured from the desperado who they'll be trailing. Uh, and everybody said he couldn't be ridden, and that if he yeah. was ridden, the desperado would come and but Tim get McCoy, him. Tim McCoy can ride it. Yeah, he can. He can do anything. And so, interesting thing about him, I think he was born in the east someplace, but he went to uh, Wyoming and he learned uh, how to uh, uh, break horses and uh, learned a lot of really cowboyish stuff uh, yeah. before he got uh, brought into films. But also, uh, he um, uh, to me, a lot of these things have to do with the interesting backstory. He took a break. During World War One and enlisted, never saw combat, but uh, he started up the uh, trail of a military career. And also during World War Two, he took a yeah. break and he enlisted, and he wound up retiring uh, as a brigadier general uh, in, I think, the Wyoming National Guard. So uh, he's an yeah. inter interesting guy individually. But getting back for a moment, this is the pretty girl, uh, Frances. Uh, forget her name, but. Uh, she was only in uh, maybe a dozen movies, uh, but she was also the lead in a Gene Autry film. So there were lots of interesting things uh, in the background. You you love uh, you love the the research for these old films Absolutely. more than you love the films. Yeah. So getting back to the film for a moment. So all these B movies uh, really were in, like I think uh, uh, you were talking about. You go to the movies and you'd see two features and a, a cartoon or a couple of cartoons. Right. Well, this and, was, and you'd get. You get a chance to win something. Oh, they always yeah. had prizes they gave out. Right, green stamps or plates or something. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I don't think they had green stamps in the day. They didn't have they didn't have color. It was black and white. I'm just, but in any event, um, so the story is basically meaningless and unbelievable, but it didn't matter because films were new. So most of these things were actually probably not as panable even in its day, because it was so new to people, just the fascination of watching some kind of story being told on screen. And yeah. uh, they all wound up having a happy ending, just like Hallmark. 
So, you know, you kid me about like in Hallmark, same difference over here, except that uh, they're not made in Canada. They're made <laughs> in the, on the West Coast. But getting they're made back, in Simi Valley is where they're made. But getting, yeah. getting back to, so these were just filler. It didn't matter that uh, the stories weren't really that good by today's standards. In those days, it filled, it was the fascination of watching something for an hour, a, a complete story from beginning to end. But think about it, on Saturday mornings, when you and I watched them and a lot of our audience members did, uh, we were these impressionable young people who didn't have, we were fascinated, A, also by film, by television, and just the fact that we were watching a story beginning to end, and we didn't necessarily make all the connections about how B-movie they really were. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, to me, the best thing of all, and I don't know whether it affects anybody else, I was always fascinated about the sound of the hoofs going down a dirt road. Uh, right. It had that special <laughs> sound. To, and this movie was replete with that and fake gunfire. Totally oh, yeah. uncoordinated to the movement of the guns. So they, they'd shoot the gun and then you'd wait a while and there'd be a bang. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. sometimes like what we record here. <laughs> Not always 100% in sync, but they tried hard. Yeah. Of course, we don't necessarily. Uh, but anyway, you, you're you watching all this stuff here. And I guess what what uh, what really makes it the B movie, if you want to cut to the chase, is that the uh, story is the reason they call him a traitor is he's a Texas Ranger. And then he his captain takes off his badge because he's the best they have. Yeah. It calls him a traitor so he can go undercover and capture the desperados. Uh, and so... Uh, Colonel Tim goes undercover. Oh, my goodness. And he's a How traitor. Exciting. Yeah. And at the very end, after they, he helps them capture the desperados, the captain was killed in a, uh, a, a fight, a, 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 fight well, a shootout with the desperados. And uh, they call him a traitor and they lock him up and they take him away in handcuffs, and put him in a cell. No, nobody knew that Tim was no, but, anything but a traitor, but, right? But he, he was but undercover. He was, but he was okay with it because he did his job as a Texas Ranger, and he, he was okay with the fact that people would call him a traitor. He knew what was true. And then at the very end... Uh, oh, wait, then, don't spoil the ending, oh, Art. I don't want to... Don't, I don't want spoil to... the ending. Everybody will want to guess whether he gets yeah. the girl or not. Okay, so why don't you cover your, why don't you cover your ears? <laughs> uh, so at the very end, they have him in handcuffs. They take him away to a jail cell. He's rotting away in the jail cell. And they, uh, let, let's see if we can get a little bit closer to the end here. Uh, and um, uh, they, oh, and he gets shot and he recovers from being shot in the back, uh, which he allowed another deputy to do so that he wouldn't have to shoot him. All those kind of pokey things. But at the very end, the uh, uh, the captain is dead. So there's no, he, he can't testify that, he really was undercover, but he left a note. He left a letter in his desk, which they finally got to, and it showed well, now, that. I I oh, want to oh, take no, 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 no. I'm not quite finished yet. Uh, oh, this, I'm sorry. The, the drama, the drama of it all, okay. and uh, uh, so the uh, the the new head of the Texas Rangers brings the girl to the jail cell, reads the note to him. He's recovering from being shot here, by the way. Uh, and it, I didn't want to ruin it for too many people, but he was shot and he's recovering. But in any event, that brings the girl to the jail and he says, okay, can you let us out? Let me out. So they open the door and they push the girl in and they lock the keys and walk away so that they could have their little tryst, their little honeymoon, uh, their, you know, and get together and be alone and everything right. would be fine with the world. And, and, and they ride off into the sunset. Yeah. Yeah. So look, I take exception to your calling it, uh, well, it is hokey, okay? The plot is hokey. <laughs> However, it's no hokier than any of the movies we see today. They're just, they just slicker. The, the plots, the, this is classic drama, really, if you think about it. There's a good guy, he's misunderstood, he's fighting the bad guys, and he gets the girl in the end, and... He, right. he, you know, we we are constantly wondering who's going to win. Is it the bad guys are going to take? Is Tim going to get caught in the web of the these evildoers? Or it, it's great stuff, I'm telling you. 
And for kids watching television in the 50s, this was magic. Mm. I could sit and watch this stuff all day long. Oh, and you know did. what? I'll bet, I'll bet our parents going to the movies on Saturday morning in 1930s, I'll bet you they could sit and watch this stuff all day long too. Right. It's only when here we are in the, the new millennium that we're looking at this stuff. And I have to tell you, if I were to compare this to Star Trek, for instance, which is considered this great, mm. uh, this great thing, I would say all the Star Trek stuff is pretty hokey too. It's all perspective. But so if you have the perspective of being a kid in the 50s or 60s watching this kind of thing on television, I think you're going to love it. So uh, I guess really what it comes down to, one of the reasons we like the Vintage Film Channel so much is that there's a lot of stuff there that just on its own, you'd say, well, why, who cares? But I care because what this did was this brought me back to a time, uh, a very enjoyable time. There was no pressure. It was Saturday morning. Yeah. You had your cartoons. You had, the, and then you went out to play and didn't come home till it was dark. Uh, so, I mean... <laughs> Everybody, it it harkens back to those days, and yeah. and quite frankly, they're nice memories. Now our kids won't have these memories, and our our grandchildren won't have these memories, but they'll have memories of. Uh, my kids remember when there was a Pac Man with a wire connected to a TV set, <laughs> and, and it would right. go, you know, gabing 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 gabing. Yeah, and uh, so they sort of have uh, memories of that, uh, which. I don't find that thrilling, but right. you know they do. So we all have our own series of of, yep. of memories, and yep. uh, the Vintage Film Channel has something for everybody. And again, as you say, for me, half of my enjoyment of these movies and uh, of various kinds of TV shows is it causes me to go back and take a look at things like I. First of all, Tim McCoy. I may have heard the name. I'm sure I did growing up, but I didn't register it. But he was a fascinating individual who had yeah. this military career. He had this film career. Uh, and um, it's just a lot of pieces of interest in there. The fact that uh, Francis, uh, let's see what your name is, Gromit or Francis uh, 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 Grant. And uh, even Frank Melton, who played her brother, who was a bad guy, uh, yeah. was also in a whole bunch of of other things as well. Sure. So it, it, just reading that history and see how they connected together. And uh, as you know, sometimes uh, uh, we get to investigate the uh, uh, production companies that put these things together or loan people out and so on yeah. and so forth, which doesn't happen today anymore. Uh, yeah. So it, 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 there's a lot of great nostalgia there. And Vintage Film Channel, whether it be the YouTube uh, uh, channel or vintagefilmchannel.com uh, has hundreds of interesting uh, films, some that are really, really classic and others that are TV shows that uh, most of us will remember growing up. And so it's fun. So we get to go to the movies. We get to recapture some of this nostalgia every week. I'm going to leave our audience with an assignment. Hmm. And the assignment is, if you're old enough to remember the phrase, the real McCoy, uh, look it up and see if it has to do with Colonel Tim McCoy or not. In the meantime, partners, we'll see you around. yippee ki yay ki <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.